All right, guys, just doing this in one shot. It is morning in Asakusa. It's like 5 a.m. Alex and Max are awake. They've been awake. They've already gone out and walked around a bit at the temple that I wanted to see at some point without us, so great. But they were like hungry and wanted to go get something to eat, so of course, we have to go to McDonald's. That's right, we're on our journey to McDonald's. I'm already seeing some interesting things, like this uh, chef head, the Nimi guy, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of me seeing things and being like, yeah, I don't know the history of this. Is it just like neat? <laughs> so anyways, McDonald's. Yeah, you know, this has uh, been hyped up as being better than American McDonald's. And they have a Detective Conan special item right now, so that's good. Yeah, I've, I've seen the show. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, overall, pretty good sandwich. Pretty good hash brown. The hash brown felt extra greasy. And the sandwich, I like that the bun was accurate to the picture. The meat felt like a meteor in a way like this is chicken and I guess it's just not blended up like I'm used to chicken being completely blended into a patty but yeah kind of cool anyways just walking by here's a random shrine I saw and I'm like yeah this is neat you can uh, pause and read that if you want I didn't really read it I just took a picture maybe I'll read it later Anyways, we're keeping on walking around. Everybody else is awake now. And they've come and they've met us on the stream. Oh uh, yeah, Max trying a tomato lemonade, which is apparently better than it should be. So yeah, we're deciding what we're gonna do. And uh, we've gone back to the hotel just to like, I don't know, take care of something. But it, here's a shot of the uh, the beds. Kind of neat how it's set up with like a bunch of bunk beds. And it's just a, a true bedroom. Anyways, I'm uh, hanging with Adam, Don, and Julie, and we're going to go to the temple that uh, Alex and Max have already checked out. And they split off. They're gonna go do something else. I don't know. We're trying out the 7-Eleven. It was neat. Oh, some gachapons just on the street. Yeah, I'm done. It's getting one for Amy. This is what it's gonna be, Amy. This is a puffin thing. Julie also got one. It was like a secret animal underneath of a cat helmet. And then when you open it, you get to see what the animal was. Kind of a weird thing, but neat. So yeah. Walking towards the temple. Here is one of the thunder gates. It's got uh, some cool guys standing on either side, kind of cool. And uh, it's not too busy, so that's kind of nice. Yeah, you gotta get here busy or early before it gets busy, because it'll get ultra crowded. But uh, part of the problem is, you know, it's, nothing's open though, so it's not like, oh well. But I mean, I don't know, I still need to see the streetscapes and stuff. So yeah, making our way closer to the temple, go through another gate. And uh, yeah, you know, people taking their pictures and stuff. Had like an incense burning thing going on, that's kind of cool. Oh, we purified ourselves with the water. Mm -hmm. We gotta go to the temple and be pure. So yeah, this is kind of like the main attraction, I guess. There's a bunch of stuff that's hard to see behind some glass. So I didn't really look at it too closely. Also there was picture or like signs saying, don't take pictures of this. I assume it was the stuff behind the glass. But anyways, I'm getting a fortune. So for about a dollar, you like uh, randomly pull a stick out and then it tells you which number 
drawer your fortune is in. And my fortune was the last and small fortune. That's right, my luck is running out. <laughs> Don got a bad fortune though. And if you get a bad fortune, you tie it up on this rack and then your bad fortune is hopefully gone and left at the temple. <laughs> so you're free from bad fortune. So yeah, there's a nice uh, garden to the west of the temple. With a bunch of, I guess, are you, are you gonna call this koi? There was a sign that said, don't feed the carp. Carp, koi, pretty sure they're the same thing. And, you know, one of them is just worth like 20 grand. Anyways, I have got a regular fortune, and yeah, just walking around this garden, pretty nice. There's lots of flowers in bloom. No, they're not cherry blossoms, but still good bloomage going on here. And uh, Max and Alex have met up with us again, and they're getting some fortunes. Alex, you know, classic Alex. He has gotten the best fortune. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, Julie and Max, I think they both got regular fortune, which is like, I mean, what can you, you can't complain about regular fortune, right? <laughs> so yeah, walking around, here's a neat statue, which I tried to pose like the statue. Yeah, pretty good job. Yeah. So uh, yeah, just lots of walking around this area. Every now and again, going into one of the covered arcade areas. Most of these shops are not open, but there was one that was selling like ice cream. Some matcha ice cream or vanilla ice cream. It was good. I tried a little piece of it. it nice. So yeah, there's a bunch of stores along these streets. And yeah, I, was, uh, I wanted to go to Don Quixote. I think that's coming up in this section. Yeah. It's the Asasuka Don Quixote, which is kind of a famous store. Famous for being crazy and full of everything and like speakers that just not stop playing stuff that just like, it's an overlord in this store. They've immediately found the sunscreen that everybody likes. And uh, yeah, I'm going up to the second floor now. The first floor mostly seemed like snacks, so I'm like, just looking at all the stuff. Got a bunch of stickers, some ninja stars. Mmm. Who knows what you're gonna find in Don Quixote. Well, I guess actually uh, one of the things that I'm kind of keeping my eyes out for is nail clippers. Apparently Japan makes the best nail clippers. So, I mean uh, this, that's what people online are saying. Did I ever use nail clippers before? But potentially not like these Japanese ones. I think on the third floor now, it's mostly toys up here. I had a bunch of Nintendo stuff, of course, and we had some Studio Ghibli dioramas here. When the parents eat all that food and they become pigs. It's an interesting choice. Oh yeah, and there's some um, interesting costumes. Woo! We out. Oh, over here, they have some jinbeis, which is a, it's like a traditional shirt and shorts that uh, I've been kind of looking out for. I kind of want to get a jinbei for myself. Also, you know, they just got tangas out here? Interesting. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, I think uh, at this point, Don and Julie have gone off to do a tea ceremony thing that they've uh, scheduled. I'm continuing to just go around and look at everything. And I've uh, picked out a couple of things. I've got the uh, Seki nail clipper as well as some uh, Shiba Inu patches. It'll be neat. And I thought it was going to be tax free, but it wasn't because I didn't spend enough. You have to spend at least 50,000 yen, so about 50 bucks. Then we got some uh, beef bowls. I forget what these are actually, like gyudon? Something like that? But yeah, it's basically beef on rice. And uh, yeah, pretty good. Uh, apparently a classic 
just eat food kind of meal. So yeah, going around, I saw a store with a bunch of neat jackets, and I was like, whoa, cool. And then I saw that they were like $250, and I was like, all right, see you later. And uh, kind of heading back towards the temple, saw some Shiba Inus, very cute. And it's probably closer to 11 now, and it has become jam-packed. And it's probably not even like fully jam-packed, but it was crazy there. I also looked at a, I don't know, another store. <laughs> Sometimes it's kind of awkward trying to like look at traditional clothing because I don't know what I'm doing, guys. But, <laughs> but got to look, I guess. Maybe I'll find something. Yeah. And uh, we went to the visitor center, which is like kind of a cultural information center, apparently. Although if you're just here to browse, it's not that great of an experience. But on the rooftop, they have a viewing deck. So you get a nice uh, view of the temple and you know the surrounding area. It looks north and northeast mostly. But uh, yeah, you go down the stairs, you know, there's another little viewport that you can poke your camera through. But then they, they have displays and stuff. But it, I don't know, there wasn't much English, but I could have translated it. It was just like, what are we doing here, you know? The video was kind of neat of like some of the ceremonies or whatever is going on. But, uh, yeah. So after that, we went over to this like river path. We're going to do a bit of a walk along the river. And we got a trash barge going by. Well, maybe it's not going to be a trash barge, but, I mean, it's a barge. I'm pretty sure they usually put trash on those. So yeah, river walk was neat. Going back into the town, I guess. And uh, yeah, I saw online. There's a department store here that has more rooftop access. So it's like, yeah, let's check out this rooftop. And uh, yeah, it's pretty nice up here. Lots of room, not many people. You can just come up here and chill out. You can see that uh, golden flame and the Tokyo Sky Tower. There's even a washroom up here, which was like very clean. And like, yeah, it was just a good washroom up here. So yeah, we hung out up here for a little bit. And oh yeah, there's also a little shrine. Seminary, I guess. You know, the fox spirits. Guys, I'm sorry this episode is so long. <laughs> Everyone is just hanging out in the hotel trying to not make noise while I'm recording this. <laughs> sorry, everyone. But, uh, yeah. While the other guys are chilling out, I wanted to go and look at stuff. And I uh, stamped my passport with this uh, fear and <laughs> stamp. I gotta get a new passport in like a couple of years, so I was like, fuck it, I might as well start stamping random shit in here. <laughs> so, they had uh, two levels of clothing, and it was all like western style clothing, like, that's not what I'm here for. You know, it's like, I can buy that kind of stuff anywhere. I want some of this traditional garb. So, went into a place. This is the first place that asked me to take off my shoes before going in. And they helped me like shop and stuff and it was very awkward and I was like, oh God, <laughs> this is too much. <laughs> but I did try on a Jinbei that they had and it was kind of neat. Honestly, the texture of the cloth was like scratchy and not very comfortable. <laughs> so, but anyways, we've met up with everybody again, and we're hanging out. They showed us some pictures of the tea ceremony. It looked cool. And um, yeah, just looking at some of the manga that's around. Yeah. R.I.P. Toriyama. Anyways, since we're here, gotta show uh, Julian down on the rooftop. Do a little impromptu rooftop dance party. 
What a time. Flew across half the world to hang out at a department store. But, I mean, you know, it's, that's just, we're just experiencing some everyday life. Anyways, we uh, got a ticket to Akihabara. That's right, we're gonna go to Electric Town. We're gonna see what's going on over here. This is uh, the neighborhood that all the gamers talk about. So this has been kind of hyped up over years of listening to Giant Bomb and former EGM editors. They'd talk about their trips to Japan and how they would go to Super Potato and the arcades in the area and be like, whoa, it's so crazy here. But uh, unfortunately, you know, it's kind of become a tourist town and like if you're actually looking for something, you'll probably find it, but it's gonna be like three times the price that you would wanna pay. But, uh, oh well. So we're going to Taito Game Station and starting from the top, they have a bunch of rhythm games and we're gonna play them, I guess. Kind of just, you know, we're in Japan. Got to go to a game arcade. And Alex, right away, he's found the the drumming game. And, uh, you know, Alex, he's got a history of uh, drumming. You know, he's he was into rock band. That's what got him into actually playing real drums. And Alex is, like, good at drums. I don't know how much I've shown it on the class, but Alex can drum. And uh, while he's doing that, I'm trying out some of the uh, dancing games. I thought this was DDR, but like an updated version, it's not. It's like you just stomp with your left and right foot, and it's kind of like not that cool. Like when I'm playing it, I feel super stupid playing this game. <laughs> uh, anyways, I went down to the fourth floor, and they had some Street Fighter here. And this is me playing against an easy computer. I thought that, it, like, with this setup, it was like you play the person on the other side, and it might be like that, because at one point it did say a new challenger person was fighting against me, and it felt like not a computer, but it might have just been a good computer. It's hard to tell. I don't know what's going on here. Either way, I got my ass kicked, <laughs> and I'm moving on. Alex, he's getting some crazy combos. He's uh, feeling it. And then I, I did see the actual DDR and I played some Megalovania and I put the difficulty on too low and it was kind of boring. But you get like three plays. So then I turned it up to a harder difficulty and lost immediately. <laughs> so yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's just gaming I guess. And uh, on the lower levels it seems like it's mostly claw games. And yeah, there's, this is the last Rock Lee figure. So I'm like, Julie, you gotta try. And uh, immediately kind of effed it up because this is the kind of game where it's like you press the button and hold it once. Once you release it, you cannot move it anymore. So a little bit of a scam, but eff it. We tried again anyways. And then another scam, it's so weak to grab. But this is how they get you. It's like you knock it over a little bit and it makes you feel like, oh, it's right on the edge. We could probably get it if we just play more. So <laughs> this is where we stop playing. <sighs> Anyways, back down to the ground floor. And then it turns out there's also a basement floor. And this is where the Mario arcade cabinets are. And uh, people were playing Mario. So we were, we were waiting and uh, I haven't played this drum game. And then once they left, it was Mario time, so... I'm playing as Toad. I, I don't know anything about this game. But I think Don was hyped for it. I guess it's like an arcade-exclusive Mario Kart. And honestly... Like, you got a better Mario Kart at home. <laughs> I mean, it's fun to have, like, the portraits of stuff, but... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was neat, I guess. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, anyways, Adam and uh, Max seem like they're having a good time with this drumming game. They've uh, put the difficulty up a bit, and it looks fun. You know, you're drumming away there. They were, like, pretty decent at it, too. 
Then I think we're all hungry. Oh, I guess we probably went to Super Potato before we ate. Yeah, that's Super Potato. This is the legendary store. And honestly, kind of a disappointment for me. <laughs> I mean, I didn't really have anything in mind that I was super looking for. I guess I'm kind of looking for a new 3DS. But all the prices on stuff are kind of high, and it's like, I don't really want to pay 50 bucks for a uh, N64 game. It is neat to look at the stuff, though. Like, you can pretty much touch a bunch of this stuff. Even if it's not for sale, like this Rob. It's alright if you want to touch it a little bit. I think. I mean, they'd put it behind glass if they didn't think people were going to touch it. Or if they didn't want you to touch it. Because we're going to touch it. <laughs> Anyways, that's the new 3DS that I'm looking for. That's the price to be $350, which I feel like hopefully I can find something better. Yeah, and then on the top floor, it was just a bunch of uh, arcades again. I think now we're all hungry and we're going to like go eat something. We got ramen. They had a picture that was like, don't take pictures. So that was it <laughs> for the ramen visit. It was good. And uh, honestly, my ramen review, you're getting just as good an experience at home as you are <laughs> in Japan. Uh, it's, I mean, it's, if you're going to a real place, they're doing it good. Turns out, pretty authentic at home. And uh, I mean, it was good here too. So, sorry I kind of just brushed over that, but they didn't want us to film in there, so what can you do? And uh, yeah, now we're checking out the hard offs. I like looking through the junk, but uh, honestly, there wasn't really that much junk. And that was kind of expected that the downtown Tokyo hard offs are pretty picked over, and you're probably not going to find anything super cool. And also, the price is a little bit inflated. Better than Super Potato, but you know, eh. Hmm. I'm hoping we can do better. That's kind of the, the, the dream, is that you're going to find that, that sick find that you're like, yo, I found this in Japan. But, uh, yeah, who knows? They, they have a bunch of uh, Famicom carts in the junk area. And it is mostly baseball. But it's still kind of cool. Part of me is like, oh, maybe you should buy these and then, like, you know, make my own labels for uh, some fake games or something. It's like... You know, little things or make like a, a frame display of like all the different colors of uh thing. Oh yeah, and here's the hard off uh, mascot girl. I guess, I don't know, just neat. So uh, yeah, third floor or maybe this is the second floor, I kind of forget. But uh, yeah, walking around, looking at the hobby off section. There's a bunch of toys up here. Yeah, they got airsoft guns, and airsoft guns are allowed to look very real here. So, I don't know, that's just cool. Who doesn't like a gun, right guys? Oh yeah, here's a Mega Man uh, Battle Network <laughs> that uh, Max really thought about <laughs> getting. But uh, he doesn't have a way to play the actual cart, so he's like, yeah, fuck it. Just download a ROM. <laughs> Which I guess is the other thing about all retro games that anyone would want to play is that you can pretty much download a ROM. So you think the prices would be better. But oh well. We briefly went to Shibuya Station and it was crazy busy in there. So we're walking back to the hotel, which is a, it was about a 30 minute walk instead of a 20 minute uh, train ride. And, uh, yeah, once we got here, we kind of settled down, and then I went to sleep. <laughs> and I woke up later, but, like, I don't know. That's it for the video, guys. Nothing too important happened after this, I think. <laughs>